Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube video, my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's currently around two o'clock in the morning, uh, just wrapping up some things for work, and I wanted to showcase some really cool, really fast thing that I worked on for a client of mine um, and demonstrate how to do it uh, and some use cases that you may want to have with. Now, uh, we are going to dive into the Halo PSA custom integrations again in this case. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen and we will jump right into it. So I think you can see my uh, Rising Tide pre-beta internal instance. We are running on a version that has not yet been released. Um, it is a UAT instance. And so one of the new features that they introduced is the ability to tag the environment. So when you're logged in, it says this is a UAT environment. I just clicked on it, so it's secured. I don't know how if we can get it back, but that's not the point. Uh, just to showcase, we are currently on 2.135.2, but the things that I'm going to show in this video is not uh, restricted to a specific version. I think even the st latest stable version that's out there right now has the ability to do custom integrations, and everything that we're going to do is doable from custom integrations and native functionality within Halo besides for that. What exactly are we going to be doing? So everyone knows in Halo you have something called Notification Center, and you can do some kind of um, notifications based off of the notification engine. There are some events you can tie to and you can do in-app notification to notify the agent, but you can't really customize what those notifications say. You don't have the ability to control when it really happens. You can just tie it to an event and you're limited or restricted to what those events are. You can't really do much beyond it. I'm gonna show how you can use something in custom integrations and the API to make that more powerful for us. First thing we need to do is we need to go create an API application. So we're gonna search for API, we're going to jump into the Halo PSA API area, and we're going to go to View Applications. Now, I happen to know by heart how to uh, configure custom integration for Halo's API. For the second half, you may have to go to your documentation to reference it, or you can follow along in the video if it works for you. Um, and just a quick note, Scott, if you're watching, I'm sorry, this is not the video I intended when I said you can hope you're going to like the next one. Uh, but uh, something else came up. I'll get to that video at some point. Uh, this one is is something else. Maybe you'll like it. Hopefully you will. It's just a, something different. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put in Halo PSA custom integrations here. And we're going to say it's client and secret. The thing to know about client and secrets when you're building an API application, there is or has been a bug. I don't know if it's fixed in this version or not, but the bug exists that if you save an application, the client ID changes on you after you save it. So I'm going to copy the client secret because we're going to need that. Um, but the client ID I'm not going to bother with because I don't need that to happen right now. Now, ideally, I can always come back and retrieve the client ID. I can't get the client secret again without regenerating it. Ideally, you'll have an agent in place that you can use for your API agent. In this case, I'm just going to use myself because I don't have an agent on here. But I would encourage you to build an API agent that you can then tie the application to so you know and track what that integration is doing. This is true regardless of your integrations. That agent permissions are going to be restricted to the, the permissions of the API application are going to be restricted to the permissions of that agent. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the permissions tab, and I'm just going to hit all in this case. I do not recommend using all for any app integration except for maybe this one. Uh, anything that needs to do all admin tasks inside of Halo, you can do all. But primarily, you want to be more specific in the scope that you're going to be granting. In this case, I am doing all. So we've got my. Uh, client secret. We can see our client ID actually did change. Um, so we're grabbing it now. We've got my agent login as Mendy. Our permissions are set sc scope to all. And we're going to jump from integrations into custom integrations all the way at the bottom here. And if we go into custom integrations, we can see that we already have ChatGPT, which as you saw in previous videos, it's built in with ChatGPT is enabled. If you enable Azure, Azure API, uh, Azure Open API, Azure Open AI. Wow. Um, Azure OpenAI will show up in as a custom integration. We're going to create one here called Halo PSA, and it's going to be our own Halo. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to choose a system integration. We are going to choose uh, base URL is going to be the host name that we have. So we're just going to copy it out of here, and then it's going to end in forward slash API. Again, if you don't know this by heart, you can go look at the API documentation, and from there you can figure it out what's needed, or you can just follow along. We're going to take this and go to OAuth 2.0. That is the authentication token used uh, with the API. And we are using client credentials. That is what we chose when we built the API application. The authorization header name is optional because it's by default, it's going to use authorization. And that is the header name that we want. You can also type it in if you want to be sure. 
But authorization and the header prefix of beer, these are all standard classic OAuth 2.0. Uh, so we don't have to change any of this stuff. We do need to specify a token URL. It's going to be the exact same thing, except instead of an API, we're going to put auth forward slash token. That is not a forward slash. Finally, we put, fill this in with our client ID and our client secret. So let's grab that information that we had copied. Um, and hopefully, I'm not grabbing an extra space because I don't know how that's going to come across. OK, we'll just recopy it again. And then finally, the scope, you're going to specify the exact same scope you chose when you built the original API application just a few moments ago. In that case, I chose all, so I'm doing all. If it did all colon standard, you would specify all colon standard. I'm just doing all right now. And we're going to go ahead and save that. How do we know if this worked? Well, we can easily tell whether or not it worked. We can just do a quick get clients test. So we're just going to get clients. We're just going to add tack on. Oh, that is the wrong button. Let's try that again. Clients, we're going to tack on two here. Oh, wow, they changed. OK, I was not expecting that. The custom integrations page apparently changed a bit. Um, and so we don't need to specify. We can't modify anything here, but we can modify here. And it looks like we're just going to specify uh, forward slash client. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to hit that test button. And we can see our response status is 200. 200 is an HTTP code for everything's good. And we can see we're starting to get back clients from the response, no problem. All right, we're going to change this to the notifications endpoint. And we're going to say, send notification from action. All right, and then we're going to go to our uh, drop down here for the method type. And we're going to set that to post. And then we're going to create our body with JSON. 99% of the time, you're going to post something to Halo uh, as a JSON body, it's going to be sent as an array. So we're going to open this up as an array. We're going to open up our JSON object. We're just doing one object in this array, so it doesn't, it's not much. And then we're going to specify three things here that we need to do. Uh, potentially, we only need to do two. We only need to specify uh, agent ID, and that's going to be the agent who's going to get that notification. And then we want to specify the message, and that's going to be what that message actually says. Uh, in this case, we're going to do one other one. Uh, let me just go back here, and we're going to do ticket underscore ID. There's a lot more things that we can do here. We can use notifications endpoint to send text messages, send emails. I'm just doing in-app notifications. I'm just doing simple messages, and I want to link that message, that pop-up that shows up, back to a ticket. And so these are the information that I'm going to specify. For agent ID, I'm going to use the ticket agent ID, which is down here, and just click. And then we're going to put in a comma, go to the next one. For the message, I'm actually going to do an action variable. That action variable is going to be action under uh, caret note. Oop, you got to click into that. And then we're going to do a comma. And then for a ticket ID, we're going to go back and do a ticket variable. And that ticket variable is going to be ticket caret ID, just like that. And that's basically it. That's all we need to do. We're going to go ahead and save this. Uh, you can test it if you, oh, apparently it's invalid JSON body. What did I forget? Uh, a comma or a colon is what I forgot. Let's go ahead and save that. There we go. Now we can send a notification from an action. And if we test it, it's going to prompt for a ticket number and an action number for it to send. It's going to take the note of that action and send it as a notification to the agent assigned to the ticket. That's what the goal of this is. So now we're going to come and go to our tickets actions. And we're going to build an action real quick. It's just going to be notify send note to agent. Now, obviously, I can use this to send a note to myself, but that's not what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for, I'm looking to start sending notes upon something happening, which is really going to be, um, let's do a bell here for the icon. It's going to be something like a quick action, some sort of automation occurring, and we want to notify the agent something happened to the ticket. So we're going to be using this as part of the workflow. Um, and we're going to come here. We're going to turn it off outside of workflows. We're going to change the system use to a integration method. And we're going to say the method we're going to use is to send notification from action at that point. We're going to market, market it quick action. And we're not going to care about status or anything else. Our defaults are going to set to not send an email, don't send an SMS, right? We don't have an option to send an in-app notification from here. If we did, we wouldn't have to do what we're doing. The whole point of one of the reasons why I like Halo is it's the ability to extend upon it using the framework of the API. Very powerful. We're just going to come in here and we're going to specify a default note, something like, uh, your attention is needed. Whoa, if I can type for ticket number vault ID. 
for our client dollar area. And we're going to go ahead and save this. OK. And then all we need to do is we're just going to come and fire off that ticket on a workflow. So let's go to a workflow. And let's go to, let's find a ticket first and we can work our way backwards. One of the new features they added in to the next stable version you should be able to see is the ability to click on workflows directly. And uh, if you're an admin, it'll take you into the configuration where you can just modify the workflow at that point. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change our details tab to automatically include the notify button we just did, send note to agent. So we can do it anywhere on the workflow. We don't have to mess with that. And then finally, we're just going to come along here and I'm going to assign, oh, I'm already assigned to the ticket. So I can just come here and I'm going to pop this out to a new tab so that I don't have to refresh. Boom, I have this and I've got notify, send note to agent. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that action. We're going to see that we're going to get back your attention as needed for client Freston Cakes and Bakes. And if I come up here, we should see, maybe I have to refresh for it to load. Uh, boom, your attention is needed for a ticket number for client for and cakes and bakes. And so now we've just tied this action into the notification center and we can send notifications to people based off something happening. We can tie this into a timer or an automation, something on a workflow, a ticket sitting too long in a specific state inside the workflow. We can fire off that notification to an agent, to some other agent, to the agent's manager and so on. And we click on the notification and it takes us into that ticket. That's it. That's all I have for you before I go to sleep. Hopefully this was, uh, useful and helpful. And no, I'm not including the JSON on the video, guys. It's not that complicated in this case. You should be able to retype it. And the more stuff you do manually, the better you will learn it. Uh, so I apologize if that don't like that answer. Um, but I don't think this is complicated enough. If, uh, if there is no other way for you to get the information I'm talking about, then yes, I will be happy, happy to provide it in a document. But if there are ways for you to get to it, I, my entire purpose of doing this is so that you actually learn it, not for you to get cool things out of it. So making you type it in, making you go find where to get it forces you to learn it. And I'm sorry if you don't like that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this is good. And let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.